Um, I'm here with uh, Professor Albert Ferro from the UK and Professor Peter Clemenson from Denmark at the 17th um, Congress of the International Society of Cardiovascular Pharmacotherapy. Professor Ferro and Professor Clemenson just um, co chaired the session this morning and um, also made presentations. And a number of issues actually emerged from, those, from during this session, and I would like to rescue some of those. If I could start, uh, Albert, by asking you, um, you, you, your talk actually raised an important um, issue uh, in relation to the new antiplatelets, and you correlated that with what we knew about aspirin and clopidogrel. What would be the sort of key message that one would take home from your presentation? I think there are a few messages. Uh, we have uh, the older agents, we have aspirin, we have clopidogrel, we know they work very well. We know that dual therapy with aspirin and clopidogrel uh, is, uh, is a very good uh, lifesaver in, in the setting of acute coronary syndrome. However, we do have some newer drugs now which have some advantages. Uh, they have more predictable pharmacokinetics, they're more effective uh, than clopidogrel. Um, there is a reduced need for routine platelet monitoring with these drugs because there's less variation in response. But on the counter side, uh, they do cause an increase in bleeding simply because they are more effective as antiplatelet agents. Um, and importantly, in these austere times, um, they're significantly more expensive now that clopidogrel is off patent. Um, so that, that raises uh, uh, an issue in terms of um, can we afford these newer drugs to use routinely in place of clopidogrel, which is now very much cheaper. What would be the, um, the, the key advantage or disadvantage of incorporating the new drugs into the guidelines? Because, I mean, there is a clear move in, in international guidelines to incorporate these drugs because mm -hmm. they have shown benefits in Yes, yes, in, in that and in particular because the newer drugs have a faster onset of action. So particularly in the, in the setting of uh, high-risk ACS patients um, and in patients where rapid onset of um, uh, antithrombotic efficacy is needed, and these, these agents have a clear advantage. Um, and also one of the questioners in our session raised the issue of, uh, it's not just to do with variation in clopidogrel response, but it's uh, clinical treatment failure as well, that even if the platelets respond as they should to clopidogrel, there is still a substantial number of uh, patients that uh, have recurrent thrombotic events. Um, and because the newer agents are more efficacious, they have a, a, a an advantage in that regard as well, uh, in that regardless of uh, intrinsic platelet um, resistance to clopidogrel, uh, the fact that these agents are more efficacious means that uh, they will uh, reduce the incidence of recurrent thrombotic events. Thank you. And Peter, I think this takes us very, very smoothly into the question I wanted to ask you. Uh, you presented data from uh, uh, Triton and, and, and Plato, the big, big studies dealing with the new with the new drugs, and what are the main findings in these studies that have, have actually, in a way, uh, made the big societies go for these drugs or incorporate these, these drugs into the guidelines? Well, that's, uh, that's quite a, a mouthful uh, to, to do on camera because, you know, these are big trials with uh, with uh, almost 20,000 patients and almost 15,000 patients and to summarize all the findings uh, in a few seconds is tough. But uh, I think if we look at Ticacrelor, of course in the PLATO trial, I think you did have a significant effect. So it did meet the primary endpoint. And in secondary analysis, we saw that there was an impressive decrease in cardiovascular mortality but also in all-cause mortality, which was one of the first trials with new agent that have actually managed uh, to show that. And uh, then there are also, across a wide spectrum of patients, so this being an all commons trial, and with subsequent uh, sub-studies that have addressed issues in, uh, in various subgroups, we find that there's good concordance whether it's patients undergoing bypass surgery have a very good effect, the patients that are ECS patients but medically managed have a very good outcome with tacacolor compared to clopidogrel. So it's, uh, I think the advantage of uh, tacacolor is it being a sort of all commas uh, drug in ACS with a moderate to high risk. Now with uh, looking at the present growth data uh, coming from the Triton trial, 
we've seen that uh, also that was a positive trial in terms of the composite endpoint. Although for mortality uh, and cardiovascular mortality, that was only seen you know, in a uh, secondary analysis in the stem sufferer and also uh, a, uh, another high-risk patient population was the diabetics in Triton had a very good uh, outcome. And I think going back to what Albert just alluded to, sort of the, the entire burden of cardiovascular disease in these populations, we've seen uh, studies now, both from Triton and recently uh, published during the ACC Congress in uh, Chicago, that if you look at all the events that you actually have in both uh, trials, both Triton with Prasugrel and Plato with uh, Ticacrelor, a, uh, not just doing the analysis on the first event, but actually on subsequent events, you have a high significant benefit of these uh, drugs. Of course, this is playing a bit around with the statistic, but it's comforting uh, to know. So, the take home message is that, you know, we've had Prasugrel for two to three years in, in many countries. It has been established. Uh, there are uh, some disadvantages uh, with the drug that you have to be cautious in the elderly and the lightweight patients, less than 60 kilograms. And also there's a contraindication in those with uh, stroke and prior TIA. Uh, so I think to sum it up, uh, I think Prasugrel has been well established in many places for uh, patients with STEMI and to some extent the diabetic high-risk population with ACS. Whereas in countries or regions where they did not adopt uh, Prasugrel initially, I think I see a tendency towards uh, using Ticacrelor more broadly to this uh, patient population. The, the, there was a, a, a question as well in relation to uh, clopidogrel and bleeding and preloading with clopidogrel and the, the difficulty then of sending people for surgery if they need to. How, the question is probably for both, I mean how serious that problem is? I think, that, uh, I think that's a very important issue. Uh, I think it's important to realize that the label for both drugs uh, you know, varies a little bit in different countries, but it is mandatory to be off the drug for five to seven days with uh, both uh, Prasugrel and Ticacrelor. In terms of surgery, uh, I'm not that worried. Uh, just remembering one piece of data that I have in my head, when we did the second dynamic trial, which of course was a STEMI trial years back, almost uh, 10 years since it was published, but in a consecutive series of STEMI patients, of almost 800 patients having primary PCI, only one patient went to surgery within 24 hours. And then there was a few that did uh, the following uh, three to, to seven days. So it's a rare occurrence. And I think many surgeons in many of the large surgical centers now have experience with doing acute surgery with an ADP receptor antagonist on board. And uh, admittedly, our own surgeons are always very frightened when we have one, once or twice a year when they have to do it. Not frightened, but they have respect. What I tell them is, uh, you know, just be very meticulous with your hemostasis and you'll be fine. You know, it's important to realize if the patient has been loaded with one of these efficacious drugs, you can do surgery. Actually, there are centers that don't care about, uh, you know, the five-day ban from these drugs and just operate. So what I tell the surgeons is, go ahead and do it. Be meticulous about the hemostasis. Maybe don't close up the chest quite as fast as you would have. Have your assistant sit there uh, for about an hour, maybe. Uh, might be necessary, but I think this is uh, well invested in these acutely ill patients with uh, left main disease or triple vessel disease, uh, high risk patients, uh, right. if you can then wean them off. Right. I mean, this also takes us back to what appeared to be a recurrent theme. I mean, Albert, you said, well, patient trials are slightly different perhaps from real life patients, and um, we are basing uh, our sort of practice on recommendations made by international. Uh, societies uh, who actually base their uh, recommendation on very, very large trials, thousands of patients. So then the difficulty for the clinician is how do we extrapolate the findings in so many patients to our real life 
patient, mm -hmm. uh, the one we see on, 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 on daily practice. And I think this is probably uh, many countries and, 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 and physicians are agonizing over what to do in, in, in real life with the guidance, how to make sense of the controversy or, or the lack of consensus uh, perhaps in between American and European guidance. So what would be your view on this? I think the lack of consensus reflects the fact that there isn't a right and a wrong answer to this. Um, I think we have the trial evidence. And remember, of course, that we have the Plato and Triton Timmy 38 trials with Skagor and uh, Praskor, but they're really the only large trials that we have. Um, we don't have any head-to-head -head trials between the two drugs, so we can't say that one is better than the other. We don't have any good cost, uh, sorry, any cost-benefit analyses to really say that um, using these drugs is going to uh, save lives, um, prevent hospitalizations, compared with using clopidogrel, say, in combination with platelet function testing. Um, come to come back to your question, I think there's no right and wrong answer, and that's very much reflected in, in the disparity in the guidelines between Europe and America.